if I'm ever at a bee meeting with a lot of brand new beekeepers, I will often ask, what's, what's responsible for the death of your colonies? And I'll hear Varroa and this and that. But usually when I'm in a room with new beekeepers, with beginners, the most overwhelming answer that I typically get is wax moths kill my bees. If I had to survey new beekeepers, they would all say wax moths are my principal issue. And I always say, well, that's a bit of a trick comment because in my opinion, wax moths do not kill colonies. They are what I call secondary stressors. That means something else was a primary stressor, was most responsible for the dwindling of that colony and made it vulnerable to wax moth invasion. So when asked, how do I prevent wax moths from overtaking a colony? Number one, keep that colony as strong as possible. And people say, well, if I knew how to do that, then I wouldn't have a wax moth problem. So then let's think about the key stressors that would be weakening your colony most of the time. Is it queen right and is she good? Prolific layer, producing lots of brood, are her offspring fit and productive? Do they have the food they need to maintain their health? Do they have enough carbohydrate reserves? Do they have enough protein reserves? In other words, honey and pollen. Are their varroa populations under control? Have you been controlling varroa the way you should be, right? If you're doing those three things, and then again, keeping watch on viruses and small high beetles, et cetera, your colonies are going to be strong and healthy. If your colonies are strong and healthy, they will not have a problem with wax moths. Virtually every colony that I've ever gone into throughout the U.S. has a wax moth or two in it. So it's not like they're not always there. They're always there. So the best way to manage around wax moths is keep those colonies strong and healthy because bees can keep wax moths from causing damage if they are otherwise a strong, healthy colony. Another thing that's a bit of a, uh, a tidbit that's useful to know is I will also only provide the amount of combs to that colony that they are able to cover. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I've got two deep boxes full of bees, and that's it. But let's say I have two medium supers on top of those two deep boxes. And the two deep boxes are full of bees, but there's hardly any bees in those medium supers at all. Combs that are not protected by bees are vulnerable to wax moths. So in that case, I would remove those two supers that have few or no bees in them to remove the ability for wax moths to cause a problem in those two supers. So keep your colonies as strong as possible and also make sure that bees have only the combs that they're, they are able to adequately cover and protect. And those two things really go a long way to keeping wax moths from overtaking a colony.